Dreallday.com. Just to give you all a brief introduction for those of you coming in here who don't know who I am, my name is Dre Baldwin. I got a website called DreAllDay.com. I'm an empowerment expert. I'm a professional speaker, backgrounds as a professional athlete. I'm a professional content marketer, branding expert, marketing expert. I do a lot of things. I'm an author. I got a blog with over 3,500 blog posts. I got a YouTube channel with over 4,000 videos, 35 million views, over 100,000 subscribers. And what I do here on the internet is I produce content. I can I communicate with my audience, which is all these people out here. Some of you know me, some of you who don't. Some of you want to get to know me. And this is something that I just enjoy doing. You know, I built my own personal brand from nothing, from a free blog and a YouTube channel. And now we here. Started from the bottom, now we here. What's up, Asset2149? Harlem Joe, yeah, I mentioned basketball. We know that. Coach Kev, what's going on? So we about to talk about, someone asked me, because last week I mentioned in my Q&A that I was going to stop doing the Q&As where I just took every question off my YouTube channel. I decided that I'm going to take the best questions out of the comments and I'll make a separate video when somebody asks me a really good question. So I got a really good question from Mr. State of Nate 802. And his question was, What's going on, Ali Han? 19-9249, MG Chronicles, what's going on? State of Nate asked me the question, Trey Time 25, what up? He asked me, what are some top books that I could recommend? And usually when I answer that question, I say, you know, it's on my website. There's a list on my website. If you go to dreallday.com, the guides and tips page, there's a link that there that says my top book recommendations. I usually refer people to that, but I know a lot of people just don't read. So if I tell somebody to go somewhere they can read something, they're not even going to do it. So what's up, Alba99999 and Reigns, what's going on? Just came in. Appreciate that, Harlem Joe, sharing this on your Twitter feed. So everybody else, please do the same thing Harlem Joe did. Swipe this to the right. Share this on your Twitter feed. My Twitter is Dre all day for those of you who don't know. So I, I put stuff out there on Twitter in short bites that I don't put out in, in full that I can't do in a full video or a Facebook post or a book or a blog post. So State of Nate 802, thank you for this great question. His question was, what are some top books that you recommend? I'm going to talk about some of my favorite books. And MG Chronicle said, I look... Hood, intellectual, hot, and want to marry you. MG Chronicles, where are you from? <laughs> Day Clay, what's going on? What's up, Alba? What language is that you speaking? Ali Han, I'm doing fantastic. You see, don't I look fantastic? Don't I look like I'm doing fantastic? I am. I should look how I'm feeling. So I'm going to give you what I got here is my iPad, and I got my iBooks open. Me, I read all my books. I used to read, of course, hard copy books. Our MG Chronicles from Turkey, that's what's up. You ever been to the USA? Steven19, what's up? Just came in. I used to read all my books on hard copy. Now I read all my books digitally. So I don't have a bookshelf anymore. All the books that I had, I don't I didn't even keep. So now I got everything digital. So I carry all my books around me on my phone or my computer or my you know tablet, mobile device, whatever what have you. So I'm gonna give you some of my favorite books. I'm gonna tell you what the book is, who wrote it, what it's about, and why it's one of my favorite books. So if you're interested in any of these books, you can go get it. And before I even get into that, let me tell you why I'm even making this video because what a lot of you have to understand is that your knowledge, the knowledge that you're going to get for life, is going to help you build your business. They're going to help you get where you want to get, you know, relationship-wise, socially. If you want to build your own brand, you want to do marketing, you want to promote yourself or promote your business, service, or product. The information that you need to do that is not going to be taught to you in school. So if you're in school right now, that doesn't mean drop out of school and throw your textbooks in the trash can. Stay in school if you're already in school. You might as well finish if you started something. Finish it. You know, your mom's going to be happy. Your dad's going to be happy. Your family's going to celebrate. And, you know, people probably give you some money. You could use that to start your business. So finish school. Do that. You know, get the knowledge. But make sure that you understand that what you're being taught in school is not 100% of the information that you're going to need. There's a lot of stuff that you will not learn in school that you're going to need if you want to be a business person. And trust me, I'm telling you this not because I got anything against school. I went to school myself. I got a business marketing and management degree from Penn State University at the Altoona campus where I played basketball before my pro career. But I understood probably about three and a half years into college, not three and a half, two and a half years into college that my college professors couldn't teach me anything about the internet. So the internet was brand new. What college professor could teach you how to do something on Periscope and actually get some followers? What college professor could teach you about you know, writing a book? Who could teach you about building a successful blog? Nobody on, nobody speaking at a college, nobody teaching at a college, most of them can't teach that. How can they teach you to build up a YouTube channel? Nobody can do that. MG Chronicle said, I just overwhelmingly adore you. I just can't help it. Well, that's what's up. I appreciate I appreciate that fact. So keep adoring me and keep hitting the hearts. I don't see your color hearts, MG Chronicles. So if you really adore me, you got to show me. You're telling me, but you got to show me. 
Don't Jill Scott got a song called Show Me. I hear you talking, but you got to show me. Now, look. The reason that, I, again, what I said is that, yo, what's up, Raider Nation Raw? The reason I said that is that the knowledge that you're going to need to get to where you want to go in life is going to come from your outside education. Your own, the word is, your personal education. Not the education that, not the education that you got in school. That's the rote education, especially in the United States. The educational system is designed like one size fits all. Everybody doesn't have the same interests. So if you want to be marketing, you want to get into business, you want to build your brand, you want to start a YouTube channel, you want to be a professional speaker, they can't teach you that in the school. How, who, who there can teach you how to do that? Only people that can teach you how to do something is somebody who's actually doing it. So I come here giving you my experiences and my knowledge about the things that I actually do, not the things that I read about, watched, or heard somebody else do. What's going on? Sock. Sock and Glow from Russia. That's what's up. So look, I'm going to give you my top books. And I'm going to tell you why. So let's get right into it without further ado. Number one book. Nope. So you want a book about talking to girls? Talk them, Joe. There's a guy named Tucker Max. Tucker Max. He just wrote a book called Mate. M-A-T-E. Buy that book and read it immediately. That book will give you all your information. Number one book I'm going to give you. Just I'm showing you my iBooks library. I got a ton of books in here. As you can see, these are all books in my iBooks library that I've either read or am reading or about to read. a lot of them. So here's the number one book, my favorite book of all time, The 48 Laws of Power. That's right here, 48 Laws of Power. That is by Mr. Robert Greene. Robert Greene is my favorite author of all time. I stumbled across The 48 Laws of Power back in like 1999 or 2000. This is before we had digital books. I was in a bookstore in Philadelphia where I'm from and I was just scanning the, the self-help section is what they call it. They didn't call it personal development. They called it self-help. I like personal development better than self-help. I don't need self -help. I don't need a therapist. I just wanted to develop myself as a person. So I saw that book, the spine of the book, it said the 48 Laws of Power. I ripped it off. I not ripped it off, grabbed it off the shelf. MG asked me, have I read Michael Moss, Salt, Sugar, Fat? No, but I will. I read that book in the store a couple chapters and the chapter that really got my attention was chapter number 28 interaction with boldness that is one of my favorite chapters I felt like I had been practicing that law of power up to that point but the other 47 laws I didn't know that they existed I didn't know about them some of them I had been practicing some of them I had been violating and some of them some of them have been used against me yes this will be uploaded on YouTube for those who are wondering yes this will go on my YouTube channel which is work on your game that's ga dot me work on your ga dot me and this book is, like I said, is, is the Bible for me. It's my all-time favorite book. Robert Greene is my favorite author. The 48 Laws of Power is, basically, is 48 different chapters that explain you different ways that power works for you and against you. The number one rule of the book, for those who haven't read it yet, is the number one thing, the number one key to power is controlling your emotions. Controlling your emotions. Don't get too super emotional about anything, whether it's positive or negative, and never let someone else's actions or words dominate your emotions or force you to react emotionally to anything that you're doing or force you to react emotionally to anything that is going on in your environment so 48 laws of power is the first book i tell you the next book we're going to stick with the theme of mr robert green and now we're going to move to also my favorite rapper which is mr 50 cent and that book is called the 50th law and i just tapped on a book by accident the 50th law that's by robert green and 50 cent that book came out in I think around 2009, 2010. 50 is my favorite rapper just because I love his story, his backstory. It's not just the music, it's the backstory that the guy, y'all know 50 Cent's story. He was coming up in rap, he got shot, he was damned, he got shot nine times, almost point blank range, damn near died, came back, built this whole empire and brand off the energy that he had to have in order to come back from getting shot like that and then get back in the record industry. And he wrote a book with Robert Greene because Robert Greene was one of his favorite authors. He was a fan of the 48 laws of power they ended up writing the 50th law the whole premise of the 50th law is to have no fear to maybe you can have fear but to still act in the face of fear and when you face fear to act even stronger than you would have if the fear wasn't there so basically when you have something that you're thinking about doing and you're afraid of it you ratchet up your energy 10 times higher just because you feel that fear to push yourself past it if you think about a guy looking down the barrel of a gun getting shot nine times and coming back from that i think that's the ultimate fear and one thing i heard 50 say not in the book but i think of following on instagram he said listen i live on the edge i live on the edge because i'm not afraid Everything that I was afraid of already happened to me. So there's nothing that could happen to me now that I could be afraid of. You know, a rapper make a song about me, somebody diss me, some blogger say that he don't like my music. How could you be faced by that when you just when you've been shot nine times and you came back from it? So that fearlessness, which 
he had to have because he got shot. All of us, we don't have to have that fearlessness. We don't have to get shot to have that fearlessness. What we can do is read this book and start to absorb the energy of what the chapters talk about. So that book is 10 chapters. My favorite chapter in that book, man, I like every chapter in that book. Number one is probably lead from the front, authority. I think that's chapter five or chapter six. Lead from the front. That's the 50th law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. All right, third book, I'm gonna get, go off of Robert Greene. We're gonna come back to Robert Greene's. There's another book. And Positive Key says, Positive Kirby says, 48 Laws says, trying to impress people with many words makes you seem less powerful. Absolutely, that is very true. But there's also another chapter that says, court attention at all costs. So you gotta be able to apply each rule as necessary for that particular situation. It's not a color by numbers. It's not like, all right, so this law says this, so I gotta live just like this law every day, all day. That's not the way that it works. You gotta be able to read each law and know when to use it and when not to use it strategically. So if you read the whole book, you'll definitely get that information. So next book is going, we're gonna go over to basketball and Mr. Tim Grover, his book is called Relentless. And this book just came out two years ago, two and a half years ago. I know a lot of you who are into sports have read that book. Tim Grover, for those of you who don't know, all y'all know who Michael Jordan is, right? Tim Grover is, was Michael Jordan's personal trainer during his basketball years with the Chicago Bulls. And I'm talking about all the way from in the 80s before he won championships, all the way through all those championship years. And even when he came back and he was playing for the Wizards, Tim Grover was Michael Jordan's trainer. He, Tim Grover actually used to play ball himself, but he kept getting injured and he realized that basketball, playing basketball wasn't gonna work out, so he decided he wanted to be in the training side so he could still be in basketball. And his book is excellent. It kind of relates a lot to the 48 Laws of Power because Tim Grover is all about being relentless. Just think of that title. It's about having a nonstop attitude and the relentless is not a book for followers. Relentless is not a book for the role players. Relentless is a book not the role players on a team, but the role players in life, rather, is what I'm saying, figuratively speaking. Relentless is a book about anybody who wants to take their performance to the highest level. And you do not have to be an athlete to read the book Relentless. That is also, that's probably my top five. These are my top five books that I'm giving you right now. So Relentless by Tim Grover, y'all can pick that up, you know, wherever books are sold. Next book is The 33 Strategies of War. That is by, again common theme here, Mr. Robert Greene, my favorite author. And this book is all about conflicts. The conflicts that you deal with in life, both internal, which means in your mind, and the external conflicts, dealing with other people. And this is 33 chapters, same as 48 Laws of Power. It's 33 chapters talking about different conflicts that you're going to come across in life and how you need to deal with them mentally. And understand it is not a rule book. All right. When it says strategies and laws, these are not rules. That doesn't mean you had to do it exactly like this every single time. You got to be able to read everything, absorb everything, and then start to use it in a way that makes sense for you based on the situation that you're in. That's the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. Next book I will give you will be, here's a short one. This is called The Art of Worldly Wisdom. The author is named Balthazar Gratian. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Balthazar, that's B A L. T-A-S-A-R, last name, Gratian, G-R-A-C-I-A-N. It is called The Art of Worldly Wisdom. And what I like about this book, and what a lot of you gonna like about this book is actually very short. Compared to Robert Greene's 33 Strategies of War, if you get the hard copy of that book, it's like this thick, 33 Strategies of War. Not to discourage you from reading it, but just the fact that I know most people just don't read. But if you wanna get the book, read the whole thing. But The Art of Worldly Wisdom is like a little pocket, like one of them little pamphlets that they hand you. You know when you, you walk by a church and they hand you one of them little pamphlets. It's like that, a little bit thicker than that, but it's not that much thicker. And it's all uh, these aphorisms, which are like kind of sayings about life that kind of relate to anything. And it's probably maybe 100, 200 pages, but it's a little, little pocket book that you can fit in the back pocket of your jeans. It's a very useful book. Read that book, The Art of Worldly Wisdom, Balthazar Gratian. Look that book up and buy it. Now, the next book I'm going to give you will be by Mr. Napoleon Hill. All of you have heard of the book called Think and Grow Rich, right? So Napoleon Hill wrote another book. It is called The Law of Success. The Law of Success. And Napoleon Hill's book is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's telling you all the laws that you need to follow to be successful in life. So they talk about your money. It talks about dealing with other people. It talks about building your business. It talks about creative thinking. It talks about being resourceful. It talks about dealing with conflict. It talks about working with other people in a way that makes them want to help you and work with you. It covers basically every area of life. And understand Napoleon Hill wrote his books back in the 20s and the 30s. So these books are 
timeless. The, a book standing the test of time really proves how great it is. Because if somebody wrote a book today and is real popular, of course, because everybody's talking about the new thing. But if a book came out damn near 100 years ago and people are still talking about it, reading it, quoting it, recommending it, like I'm doing right now, The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill, read that book. Do you want to get a taste of Napoleon Hill? Go on YouTube or go on anywhere you can find audio programs and search Napoleon Hill and you'll hear some of his audio tapes. So the stuff that he talked about way back then still applies to people to this very day. So he's one of the greats. Another book. Next book I will give you. Mr. Tony Robbins. Y'all know Tony Robbins. Anthony Robbins. He's a motivational speaker is what people call him. It's not really what he is. He's like a super life coach. He does all these live programs, live events. He sells tons of programs. Tony Robbins probably makes... 20 million dollars a year just selling programs of stuff that he recorded already but tony robbins is one of the best when it comes to self-help he actually is one of the first people to actually start the self-help industry as we know it today this book is called awaken the giant within this book came out i believe in the late 80s before self-help was really a thing he kind of created self-help as we know it today and this book Basically, again, covers every area of life, and this is one of those thick books. This is not a short book. It's going to take you a while to read The Law of Success, Awaken the Giant Within, and The 33 Strategies Award. These are long books. It's going to take you some time to finish them, but it's going to be worth it. And that's why, why I said most people don't read. So understand this, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching this, <clears throat> wow. If you're watching this, <laughs> if you want to be a person that most people won't be, you want to do what most people won't do, you want to have what most people won't have, what does that mean? You got to do the things that most people will not do. So since I'm telling you right now, and you probably already know this, and you might be even the person I'm talking about, most people don't read. What does that mean you need to do? You need to pick up some books and read. And the longer the book, the more valuable it will be to you because most people will read a magazine that's reading, but they won't read a book because a magazine is like this and a book is like this. So most people are not going to read them. So when I give you these recommendations and tell you these are super long books, 33 Strategies of War is a long ass book. The Law of Success is a long ass book. Awaken the Giant Within is a long ass book. Most people will not read those books. I sent my sister Awaken the Giant Within, the actual book, via Amazon. She lives in California like almost a year ago. I don't think she even opened the book. I'm actually, I'm going to text her today and ask her if she ever read that book. And I'm betting that she didn't. Not because she's not a smart person, not because she's not a good person, not because there's anything wrong with her, but because most people just don't read books. And they don't read for leisure. So she would read if she had to. But I don't know if she would read it for leisure. But I'm going to find out. Maybe I'm wrong. So I don't want to be wrong about any of y'all. you watching this right now and I'm telling you about this. You need to go get these books. You're now responsible for this information and read it. Awaken the Giant Within is kind of like a... It's kind of... Y'all yeah, know who Tony Robbins is? Is there anybody here who does not know who Tony Robbins is? Can y'all tell me if you're familiar with Tony Robbins? Before I kind of... I don't want to kind of explain to you who he is if y'all already know who I'm talking about. So because somebody tell me... If you're familiar with Tony Robbins, what you know about him, all right, Boston Baller does not know. Mr. Underdog knows about Tony. All right, what about everybody else? Do y'all know who Tony Robbins is? All right, Trey is kind of familiar. Okay, so y'all have heard of him. You kind of got an idea. All right, Stephen 19 knows who Tony Robbins is. Tony Robbins is like, Tony Robbins is the ultimate motivational speaker. All right, so some of y'all have seen his videos and stuff like that. Listen, y'all know E.T., right? Y'all know Eric Thomas? Everybody knows E.T. because E.T. is like the guy. He's popular now, especially with young uh, minorities. Eric Thomas is very popular with the young demographic. Tony Robbins is E.T. times 100. All right, he's E.T. times 100. And the reason I say that, not to say that E.T. isn't great, but Tony Robbins, everything you hear E.T. saying is, is like the, the Ebonics version of Tony Robbins. That's the best way I can describe it. I'm going to keep it real. That's, what, that's how I will compare those two guys. Tony Robbins has given his message to millions, I'm saying millions of people over the last 30 so years. I did not talk about Les Brown yet. We're not talking about speakers, we're talking about books. But anyway, I didn't get to all that yet. Tony Robbins is the ultimate motivational speaker. So if you ever heard a motivational speaker and thought they were good, Tony Robbins is like the the motivational speaker of motivational speakers. All right, I guarantee you, if you ever met somebody who's a great motivational speaker, ask them about Tony Robbins, they'll start singing his praises. They'll tell you that they read his books. They'll tell you that they listen to his tapes. They'll tell you that the stuff that they say comes from listening to Tony Robbins. I guarantee you, anybody who's ever said anything motivational got some of their source information or source knowledge or material. They borrowed some of that from Tony Robbins, definitely. Yes, he was in a movie, Shallow Howl, absolutely. But if that's all you know about Tony Robbins, 
problems, you got to know some more, Coach Kev. <laughs> he was in a movie, but yes, he was in that movie. But Awaken the Giant Within is Tony Robbins' like magnum opus book, where he basically put everything that he talks about in his motivational speeches into a book. Now, hearing somebody speak something on stage while you're in front of them and reading their book is two different things, but Awaken the Giant Within basically gives you everything that Tony's going to give you in a nutshell. Again, just because you read the book don't mean you shouldn't go to the event if you have the opportunity. I haven't even been to an event yet, but I am definitely going to. His events will go anywhere from three to like seven days in his total immersion, which means you'll get to the event at eight o'clock in the morning and you won't leave the building, the venue, until three or four o'clock the next morning. That's crazy. I know people who go into his events and they tell me like, yo, you get there at 8 a.m., you get back to the hotel like four in the morning and you just pass out. And guess what? You got to be there the next morning at 7 a.m. So you sleep like two hours and then you go right back and you do that for like five days straight. And Tony Robbins explains why he does that. Any of you want to get some info on Tony before you read the book, because I know most people are not even going to read this, even though I'm telling you, go to YouTube. YouTube.com, look up Tony Robbins. You'll see he got there's a million Tony Robbins videos on the internet right now of him doing speaking, him doing interviews, and you'll get an idea of who this guy is. But take the word from me since you're watching this. Get Tony Robbins' book and read it. So the next book is a call, book called by Chin Ning Chu. It is called Thick Face Black Heart. Thick Face Black Heart. And it says the warrior philosophy for conquering the challenges of business and life. And Chin Ning Chu is from, I believe, Chinese the Chinese culture and a lot of Eastern philosophy that she talks about in this book but that doesn't mean it's gonna go over your head doesn't mean you should not read it every book I'm recommending here you absolutely is a must as you read these books if you don't read them and you don't get the information then you don't get what you want to get out of your business out of your life then it's your fault because I'm telling you right now thick face black heart is all about the actual title what it means is having thick face means you ever heard the phrase people want to save face or lose face save face means like to be Saving face means like so you maintain your de dignity. Lose face means you lose self-esteem or people don't respect you. Thick face means your face is so thick that nothing that happens to you from the outside world is going to bother how you feel about yourself. Or even anything going on internally that's bothering you, you're still going to have a strong face to the outside world. So that's what thick face means. Black heart means, it doesn't mean that you're like a nasty person or you're going to do terrible things to other people, but it means when it comes time to get something done, you got to tap into your killer instinct and get it done regardless of other people's feelings, regardless of who's in your way. Yeah, thick skin is kind of the same thing, Trey Tom, yes. So what thick face black heart is about is getting things done, having that killer instinct, that internal killer instinct, and also not letting outside factors or even internal factors stop you from showing a strong face to the world and being a strong individual when you're dealing with other people. People. Thick Face Black Heart, great book. So let me give you, I'll give you one or two more books. Let me see what else I got here. Uh, one more here, Jack Canfield, The Success Principles. Any of you don't know about Jack Canfield, y'all heard of Chicken Soup for the Soul or the whole Chicken Soup series? Jack Canfield and his co-author Mark Victor Hansen, they're the ones who started that whole series of... Uh, the chicken soup series now Jack Canfield wrote this book by himself it's called the success principles it's similar to how Napoleon Hill wrote the law of success Jack principles wrote Jack Canfield wrote the success principles but they're two different books completely different authors completely different styles read both of them because guess what do, do y'all want success so if you want success you wouldn't read one book on success and say all right I know everything I need to know if you want success you should read every book on success and I'm giving you two great ones which is the success principles by Jack Canfield and the law of success by Napoleon Hill read both of those and if you want to know about Canfield look him up on YouTube you'll see him speaking a ton of places his stuff is really great so look up Jack Canfield and read that book now let me give you I give you a hip hop book, another hip hop book outside of 50 Cent is called My Infamous Life. That's by the rapper named Prodigy of Mob Deep. I know a lot of y'all might not know Mob Deep because they're kind of not really out right now, but they are a 90s hip hop group. 90s and 2000. But Prodigy wrote this book called My Infamous Life. He talks about his, up, his upbringing in Queensbridge, New York. He's from Queens. He talks about his rap history, about dealing with different rappers, Keith Murray, Tupac, Redman, 50 Cent, his time with G-Unit, Jay-Z, Nas, all these other rappers that he's dealt with. And the thing about his book is that there's a lot of hip hop artists will write books, but this book is so, he's a great writer. He's a great storyteller. Prodigy is the kind of guy, when you read his book, you feel like you're there in the situation with him as he's explaining it. He's a really good storyteller. This is probably the best book of any hip-hop artist. This is the best book. 
besides 50s and Robert Greene, because it's not really 50s whole story. But Prodigy's book, My Infamous Life, is the best rapper telling his whole background story of anyone that I read so far. And let me see if I got any others that I want to give y'all here. I know this is a long ass video. Anybody got a question while we on this? I'm open to taking your questions. If somebody has a question, leave it. It's so many books. But if you go to, and here's one that I'm actually going through right now. It's called The 10X Rule by Mr. Grant Cardone. I know y'all know about Grant Cardone. Again, he's a guy who's really known being talked about right now. And the 10X rule is about taking everything you think about life and multiplying it by 10. That means not only the successes that you want, multiply the successes you want by 10, multiply the effort that it's going to take to actually get that success by 10. So if you think something's going to take you two years, it might take you 20. If you think it's going to take you an hour a day, it'll probably take you 10. If you need to call somebody one time or two times to make a sale, it's probably going to take you 10 or 20 times to make that sale. So the 10X rule is about multiplying everything by 10. It's about a super high level of action. Is the Dre All Day show happening today? I don't know. I'm, I got a lot of work to do at home, so I don't know if I'm going to be out in the streets. How do I choose the books that I read? That's a great question, my coach Kev B. What I do is listen to people who have what I want. So when I hear somebody who's smarter than me say, yo, I'm reading this book and I haven't read it yet, I'll go get that book. If I hear somebody who has had more success than me in whatever area and they say I wrote a book, I'll go get their book. Or they say I read this book and I haven't heard of it, I haven't read it yet, I'll go get that book. So whenever I hear about a good book from somebody whose information and knowledge I respect or whose uh, accomplishments I respect, I'll go get that book. And the great thing about books is that it's not a finite thing. So it's not like if Coach Kev B and Trey Tom both tell me about a great book, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I have to pick one. Like, all right, which one of them should I listen to? I might go read both of them. Why not read both of them? This is education. Y'all got to understand that this is your life we're talking about. This is your success. This is your business. Whatever you want to do in life, you're going to need some knowledge from some other people. Because one thing that James Altucher, another great author, one thing that he said is that the reason why you want to read books is think about it. If Napoleon Hill wrote a book, he probably had, he probably had to live... 10 to 30 years of his life to get all the knowledge that went into that book. So if he writes 30 years of his life into one book and you can read it in a month, you just got 30 years of knowledge in 30 days. So imagine if you read a whole bunch and let's say you read 10 books a year. That's 30 years times 10. That's 300 years of other people's experience and knowledge that you got in one year just because you read their book. So that's the great thing about reading a book. It's not like it's just the information that's in that book that one time. You gotta think about how much time and effort the person who wrote the book had to put into the information that goes into the book. So you get to condense. Like if I write an autobiography when I'm 60 years old, I'm taking 60 years of my life and putting it into a 300 page book. And it's gonna take you three weeks to read that book. You just got 60 years of knowledge and experience in my, from my book in 30 days or in three weeks, whatever time it takes you to read that book. So basically you can condense the lives of a whole bunch of people by reading their books. Even if the book isn't their life story, you gotta understand for somebody to write a good book, they gotta have gone through something. So instead of you going through every single thing a hundred people have gone through, why don't you read a hundred people's books and now you got all their knowledge so you can copy the successes, avoid the mistakes, and you'll have the information without you having to actually live through all of it because none of us have, none of us could be in a hundred places at the same time. Most of us are not going to live a thousand years. So what if we can condense a thousand years of living through all these people into the books and get their information? So, of course, you also can take, you know, uh, the voice of where I'm looking for recommendations from other people. So all y'all got to do is this. Here's here's something very simple. All you can do. Think of the mo the three most successful people, you know, or the three smartest people, you know, or the three most hustling individuals, you know, or the three people who get stuff done the best are the three people that you know. I don't care what level it is. The three most hustling, successful, accomplished, three people you look up to the most, whoever they are, ask them what it, ask them to give you five book recommendations. And are those three people, let's say they give you five books each, that's a, a maximum 15 books, some of them might overlap, go get all 15 and read all of them. That's all you gotta do. And you think of three people that you look up to who you might not even know personally. Go to their websites, go to their Twitter, go to their Facebook, their Instagram, and ask them, or if, unless they posted it somewhere, ask them, like, yo, what are your favorite books? Can you give me five books that I should read? They probably have published it somewhere and they'll refer you to a link somewhere that you can read it or somewhere on their website and maybe they'll respond to you and tell you. But you got to ask if you want the information, ladies and gentlemen. If you want information and you don't ask for it and then you don't get it, it's not nobody else's fault for not telling you. It's your fault for not asking for it. So when you want information, you got to reach out and get it. So State of Nate 802, thank you for a great question led to this video. Does anyone else have any questions as we're talking about 
some of my favorite books. Again, you can read this list on my website, DreAllDay.com. The Guides and Tips section it says Dre's recommended book reading list. This is always being updated. Books on financial education. Yes, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I didn't list that. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Spell it how it sounds. That is one. Another one, Tony Robbins has wrote another book called Money master the game i didn't even finish reading that yet i didn't actually i didn't even start reading it yet but that book i definitely uh recommend so anybody else got any questions about books i'm talking about my top 10 favorite books that wasn't 10 but my top favorite books it wasn't actually a set number to if you want to read my book my first book is called buy a game you can get that at dreallday.com slash slash list l-i-s-t do you think reading books helps your business skills and idea muscle absolutely that's what I've been talking about this whole time. Yes, reading books will help your business skills, it'll help your people skills, it'll help your relationship skills, it'll help your money skills, it'll help your athletic skills, it will help everything. Definitely read books. Uh, if you are in school, that is not all the education you need. When you're in school, you're getting like 20% of the education. Yes, me personally, anybody. Yes, Trey Tom, it will help me, it will help you. It has helped me, it will continue to help me. So understand if you're in school right now, the information that you're getting is not all the information. All right, do not be fooled. Do not fall into the trap that because you got a degree from a college or two degrees or ten degrees that you have all the information that there is. There is 80% of the stuff you need to know is not taught in any university in the world. You got to get that information from other people, from books. Coach Cab says, do you read a chapter a day or as long as you can? I don't have a set amount. It's not about a set amount. All right, Monday 24 is in class watching this Periscope. That's what's up. What class you in right now, Monday? What class are you in that is not interesting enough that you watching this Periscope? It's not even that the class not interesting. It might be interesting. It's just that I'm more interesting. What class are you in? Government class? Uh, what government? <laughs> what kind of? What are they saying? What are they teaching you? What about the government? Do you need to know in that class? Like, what's the goal of the class? I mean, if you could fill us in on that. As far as reading every day, I think that was, who was that to ask that question? I think Coach Kev. You do want to read every day. You make it a daily habit. Make it a daily discipline. Same way you exercise every day. They're talking about the Supreme Court. Yeah, that's a waste of time. Are you in college or high school, Monday? What school are you in? What, what, uh, what level of school are you in right now? Are you in college? Are you in high school? Where are you at? Extra black, what's going on? We just came into the room. As far as reading goes, are you in 12th grade? Now, why are they teaching you about the Supreme Court? What, what is that? How is that going to help you in college that you know about the Supreme Court? That don't make no sense. What's going on, extra black? Look, when we talk about reading, you got to make it a daily discipline. Same way you exercise every day, or you should be exercising every day. Even if you're not an athlete, you exercise, keep your body in shape. Same way you, you know, brush your teeth every day, you drink water every day. You got to make reading a part of your daily discipline. Anything that you do every single day becomes part of your lifestyle. 21 days makes a habit. 30 days makes a lifestyle. Y'all understand that? So you got to be doing this every single day. It's not a it's not a whenever I get around to it thing. You got to find the time of your day to make sure you're doing this. This has to become a priority to you because this is education. This is knowledge. All right, you have to get the you have to get the education and knowledge if you want to get to where you want to go in life. And there are people out there who have already done it. So instead of you going through all the trial and error, making all the mistakes, get the knowledge from people who've already been through it. That's the purpose of reading the books. And it's also going to open your mind to new ideas that you haven't even considered. Whenever I'm reading a good book, I get a thousand great ideas from that book. I might not do all a thousand, but if I do one of them and that idea makes me a hundred thousand dollars, is it worth it? Absolutely. Exactly, exactly. You get more knowledge from books than all your years in school. How much does a book cost you? At the most, 20 bucks. If you get an idea that makes you a thousand, was it worth it? Was it worth it for you to read the book? Spend twenty dollars on a book and get a thousand dollars worth of information. I actually actualized a thousand dollars. What if it's a hundred thousand? What if it's a million dollars? What if you got that information from a twenty dollar, a twelve dollar, a five dollar investment in a book? You got to invest in yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not telling you to buy a product from me. I'm telling you to go buy a book from these people that I just named. And my book, I'm telling you, get it for free. DreAllDay.com slash list, L-I-S-T. You get my book, Buy a Game. That's my first book. I've written five books. All of y'all should write, write books. You keep reading books, keep getting knowledge, and start applying the knowledge. Eventually, you're going to achieve enough that people are going to want you to write a book. And then you write a book, and then you'll make all the money back that you made, all the money back that you spent on books. You'll make it back from selling books from live events from products from speaking engagements from your brand name whatever it is you end up doing from a business that you build so that's it that's all i'm gonna say about reading and writing 
not writing, but reading books. Those are my top books. This video will be on YouTube. For those of you watching on YouTube, what's up? Y'all know to leave the comments down here in the comments. Those of y'all watching on Periscope, this is Dre Baldwin. My name is Dre Baldwin. My website is called DreAllDay.com. Head of working your game, enterprises, professional speaker, professional athlete, professional author, professional content marketer, branding expert, marketing and promotions expert. Working your game, university is the school. We checking out. Class is now over work on your game. Thanks for watching this video. I'm sure you were entertained. Make sure to stay connected with me on all your favorite social networks. Twitter and Periscope at Dre All Day. Instagram Dre Baldwin. Facebook slash work on your game. You can bookmark my YouTube channel by subscribing, of course. And the website is work on your game. That's dot M-E. Work on your G-A dot M-E. And of course, my homepage is my website, DreAllDay.com. So you can know exactly what I'm doing, exactly when I'm doing it, and how you might be able to be involved. Work on your game.